2016. Uh, first, we'll start with the roll call. Uh, Dave Nelson? Here. Nick Rico? Here. Jason Greenleaf? Here. Rob McSorley? Present. <laughs> Seth Garrison? Here. And I'm Ben Viola. Um, <clears throat> next order of uh, business is the approval of the minutes from April 28th. So moved. Second. Any corrections or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Mm -hmm. I wasn't here, so I can't vote. I'm staying there, whatever it is. So we move on to the super, superintendent's operations report. Okay, thank you. Um, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of April is included in your packet. Our average daily effluent flow for the month was 1.21 million gallons a day. Our effluent quality was again well within our permitted limits. We averaged 94% uh, biochemical oxygen demand and 98% total suspended solids removal uh, with averages of 14 and 16 milligrams per liter respectfully. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of April is included in your packet. Again, there are some erroneous flows at the Pine Point st Pump Station, which as previously noted, we believe we have identified the cause of the erroneous flows and are awaiting some parts to fix the problem. Uh, the new logo is now on our website banner, business cards, and soon will be on our trucks, probably within the month it will be there. The uh, Carl and Paul have completed the installation of the first aeration tank mixers. Uh, the manufacturer has been out and started up the units, and the second train will be installed shortly. Uh, I've met with our insurance agents to start our renewal process. We will be evalu evaluating three providers. And the fire department has completed the annual inspection of the wastewater treatment facility. They found no issues and were greatly impressed with our facilities. Okay. Any questions for the superintendent? Seeing none, we'll move on to correspondence. None. None. <laughs> uh, old business. Uh, um, our legal counsel has drafted up the attached letter with regards to our evaluations of the commercial accounts that we are undertaking. Uh, with regards to flow and capacity. Um, my plan is to finalize this letter within the next month. Um, so this uh, draft here, if you have any comments on it or questions or concerns, you can certainly get them to me. Um, prior to the next meeting, and I'll, we'll incorporate them. But it'll, my plan is to uh, get this out either uh, by the end of the month or end of next month or um, soon thereafter. Unitil, Unitil Eastern Trail. Okay. Um, several months ago, Unitel had approached the district about the possibility of leasing some land from the district to construct a pressure reducing and metering station. Uh, the district expressed interest but requested an initial $7,500 to cover the cost of any outside services needed to evaluate any possible and possibly negotiate an agreement. Tonight, Unitel would like to review the appraisal of their property, which they had valued at $8,000, and to address the environmental concerns some of the trustees had. I recommend the acceptance of the check, authorize our council to review the proposal, and to schedule an executive session at the next trustees meeting to discuss the next steps. And with that, I, I know Unitel would like to. We want to get a motion first. Oh, sure. Then, then we can have so moved. It. Seconded. Okay. Um, can, can, uh, hold on. Can you restate the motion? I'm, I just want to be clear what our motion is. To accept the check, I think. That's just to accept the check. That's that's yeah. the, okay. To accept the check for what? We like taking money. The uh, seventy-five hundred dollars is to cover any expenses we have uh, <coughs> for um, uh, legal counsel to review any documents or any engineering services that we desire to hire outside of. Okay. My abilities. Okay. Um, we will use that money to cover those costs, return what monies we don't spend. Did, I got a question before we proceed ahead with any presentations. Was there, they were supposed to have come back 
after talking with DEP and whatnot, and then tell us what they wanted to consider for a property? That's what they're going to do tonight. Okay, because it seems that they've done an appraisal before we actually okay, but... We, they had asked us about doing an appraisal on it, and I had asked our counsel at that time. He said this, this, there would be nothing. Okay. Nothing well, I misunderstood that. that. I thought we were going to decide no. on what the parcel would be first. Mm -hmm. So that's my uh, misunderstanding there. Okay. Thank you. So any other questions? So I guess they want to do a presentation. They want to address, there are some environmental concerns that... Um, some of the trustees, I think uh, Mr. McSorley was one of them that brought up some environmental concerns that uh, they wanted to address. Uh, they wanted to talk about the appraisal. I believe they have the, the check. Uh, well, uh, we moved. We didn't accept it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you have a presentation you want to do? or? Um, yeah, basically... Um, Why don't you move up to the mic and state your name? And did everybody have a chance to look at the appraisal? Or does anybody need a copy? Uh, the paper copies would be good. I only provided the trustees with um, um, uh, the beginning of it that just identified the copies. It didn't include all the details. Right. Thank you. I don't need one. Thank you. Yeah. We'll share. Yeah. Okay. Um, the last time we were here, of course. So you are John Davis? I'm John Davis with Unitel. I have uh, Bob Shumrick, he's our engineer, and Gil Pascal with VHB, the environmental engineer that we've hired to answer and address the questions the board may have. Um, the appraisal um, is before you. Uh, it actually took a lot longer than we anticipated. We thought it would take a month or so, but. We struggled through, you know, kind of just uh, a few months here. So we basically have had it for less than a month, and then back on the and, and then got back on the agenda here with the board. Um, <clears throat> the appraisal came in at eight thousand, and based on what can be built on this lot is basically it's 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 not a buildable lot for a house. It has very, you know like restrictions because of the shoreland zone that it's in. So um, it came in at $8,000. I don't know if that's something that you guys had a chance to look at, but um, w with the one that was sent before. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if you have any questions or it's pre pretty much, you know, in a nutshell. Um, uh, and that's for like a 40 by 135 foot square. Okay, so I think we're going to be handling this in like a workshop, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll have an a, a executive session with our legal... I haven't forwarded anything on to our legal counsel at this point until I get in some money okay. to, yeah. to do anything with it, to review it and develop some questions. Um, um, there were some environmental questions that um, Mr. McSorley, I know, had, um, and... You may want to address those. Is now. it Phil? The Phil that had the questions. Basically, um, right. yeah, whether the lot was buildable, um, if what we wanted to do there, if that use was allowed. Um, and the town of Scarborough does have a, um, I guess it's a utility um, clause in there, and I can, so I can let Gil probably answer those questions, mm -hmm. um, get into more depth. Um, we do have an easement. On, on the road, Eastern Road, we actually have a 33-foot right wide easement that abuts the south side of Eastern Road, which abuts this property, your, your property. So it would be, it would line up accordingly for the station. Does that show on your plan, that easement? It is. Actually, in the, um, in the report, the um, appraisal included plans that we had, Submitted to him showing the footprint um, for the size of the station that we were for the station the size of the land that we were looking for.
Additionally, yeah. Bob has some bigger plans too that might. Okay. We here. Okay. Your easement is within the Eastern Trail right away, right? Eastern Road right away. Correct. The Eastern Trail is within our right away. We've actually. <laughs> It's you know like a matter of how you look at it. We were there first, and we actually um, allowed them to go in there and develop that trail. How nice how, of you! How it, wide is their right of way versus it's, it's, your? It's it, there's nothing specific as to a width. It's just more of a it's described as a trail. Okay. So, so the ROW that's referred to approximately approximate per town. GIS is that your right of way or ours? Um, it's multi. There's a right of way for the town as well. So and, and actually, the state owns it. Um, but it's right of way that was okay. given to both the, uh, the town mm -hmm. and Unitel. Well, back then it was actually um, Portland, Portland Gas, Portland Gas back at the time. And I know this is a question we may have already brought up, but what kind of wetland setbacks are there that apply to the type of gas facility you're proposing here? Um, <coughs> for utilities, Gil, are you familiar with what the exactly setback is? There. Okay, I think we just. Because you know, I don't have a scale, but it looks like you're within um, a dozen feet from the wetland. Thank you. That's marked out here. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. But no setback, uh, as stated, because we we it's, it's not a building. There's no buildings. Uh, there's no impervious surfaces. There's no runoff. Uh, it'll be piping that comes up out of the ground. It'll go into uh, like valve reducing. Um, yeah. equipment and then back into the ground again and back out and, and into the street so it's basically high pressure in reduce that pressure through a series of valves and then back out into the street and and then similar from there it's the, distributed so similar to the other unit that you have farther down the trail or yes farther that's correct out. yep two questions when were they before us before last um, Last September. Last September, okay. Um, going back to the wetlands, you said there's no setbacks at all on it? Not for utilities. It's what? Not for utilities. There's a, an exception in the, the town shoreland zoning that allows utilities to, to go in within that setback. Yeah, and typically MDP has a permit by rule for utilities, but uh, that's that's, that's with the town. No, that's the town of Scarborough. Okay, how about MDP? Um, I don't believe. Isn't this a wetland of special significance? No. It's not? Not one I find. Not, not a habitat for special birds? No, I. Uh, <laughs> Have you had any coordination with MDP at all on this? No. Uh, what would be required for permitting? Because it's pretty straightforward. There's a culvert. There's no building wetlands. We're outside the wetlands. Right. So there would be no army corps permits. Yeah. And, and, really? and, and I met with Dan Bacon and the engineer as well. We had a meeting to look at these plans and discuss what we wanted to do. And so. How deep is the pipe in there? Three, four feet. Three feet. Three feet. 
where, well, I assume the line that I'm looking at is a wetland line, and the fill lines go through it. Is there a fill in the wetlands? I think you're, yeah, you are correct. Okay. From what I see right here, uh, it's going over a little bit. Okay. Yeah. And, but and we talked about this too. Right now we have this even with the road and some concern where we try to kind of buffer this and like make it blend in. So we talked about what, uh, like lowering the site off of the road, uh -huh. having everybody go around it and all that, and that would actually reduce that, that fill. I'm, I'm not opposed to this, yep. but when you came before us before, that was one of the specific questions I asked. What is would be required with DEP? So we probably should move back to the mic over there so you get picked up on the, off the mic. For the so, you know, I, I'm not opposed to this no, project. I just but wanted yeah, to make sure that... But to answer your question, yeah, we did consult with um, Gil, who's familiar with the DEP and all that, and yeah. Well, well that's great, but, you know, every time I consult with the DEP, things change. I wouldn't know about that. And that's within the, the wetland itself. So we'd probably be speaking at the mic because the people on TV yeah, can't no, pick sure. you up. So, and you got to who you are. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. So Gil Paquette, I work for a company <laughs> called VHB offices in South Portland, Maine. I actually live in Scarborough, Maine. Uh, my expertise, if you will, is uh, natural resources. Um, I'm a wildlife biologist, a wetland scientist. I'm also heavily involved in the Scarborough Land Trust as well on the board and on the, um, um, I can't remember the other committee, but um, uh, uh, working on utility projects, that's my expertise, gas and electric. Um, looked at this project from a fatal flaws perspective looked at the available online mapping associated with wetland habitat, associated with uh, shoreline, um, with shorebird habitat and so forth. There was nothing mapped on this property. Also looking at it from uh, a, a local permitting perspective, it's zoned as resource protection, but last fall we confirmed that essential service as this is, uh, it would meet that exemption, so this facility could be built so there's no zoning board that needs to be, um, there's no zoning board approval. It's site plan approval um, from the planning board, basically. Um, there is some FERC permitting involved. That's more administrative than, um, than going through a process like with the DEP and the core associated with natural resource impacts. So just uh, straight then here. We're looking at a piece of property that's 45 by 105 feet, correct? Or a little larger than that? That's the fenced in area? Oh, it's 5,400 square feet. Okay. Sorry. 40 by 135, so. They're looking to potentially purchase I think this lease. piece of property, right? <laughs> purchase or lease, yes. Or a lease? Yes. So. All we're doing tonight is deciding if you want to accept the check and do the research. But, but they wanted to do a presentation, so. Okay. Yeah, it's actually 70 by 135. 70 by 135. Uh -huh. So I, I guess 
my question is, as far as use goes and wetlands, if, if we're leasing it, that would be one issue. If we're selling it, it's up to them to make sure that the property is conforming to what they need for utilities, right? We, we don't need to beat that yep. dead horse, right? Correct. So it would be a discussion about if we're going to lease it, are we concerned about whether it meets whether it meets uh, requirements of DEP? If we were leasing it, I would think you would be. But we haven't decided whether we're going to sell it, lease it, or anything. All we're doing tonight is accepting the check, and you know, to, to, so that we can get the research done on our side. Right. And uh, they wanted to do a a, a presentation. And so if you have, but do you have any questions? We can ask them now. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to get through this. I mean, we've got a 70 by one, <laughs> 105 piece of property, and we now have to move on and decide whether it would be up to them for the evaluation of whether wetlands setbacks are met and otherwise, correct? Yep. correct. <coughs> okay. At the next trustees meeting, what I would do is schedule a, um, uh, an exec executive session with our attorney to, to go over the uh, uh, the appraisal, and uh, at that point, we can discuss some of the details uh, and, and concerns the trustees may have. Originally, when this came forward, we just wasn't there a building proposed originally? Yes, I think was. It was, and that's uh, off the table now. So, pipes and fence potentially, potentially arborvitae type buffer. Along the roadway only. Hmm. It'd be a heater, for, heater for the gas. So we should probably move up to the mic if you can speak, because so, there's people watching on TV that won't be able to pick it up. We we'll get some huge ratings. Rich, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bob Shumrick. Um, I'm the engineer on this project <coughs> from Dover, New Hampshire. I'm with Unitil. Um, <coughs> the originally we had discussed installation of a concrete building, but We've, we've decided not to do that uh, at this point, at this time. Um, what we're planning um, to review the design is we would have an above ground, uh, a mainline valve fenced in site, to, which is to the left of the uh, of the plan, and then we have we have a buried inlet valve that goes to our uh, natural gas fired preheater, which actually heats the gas um, because the gas temperature drops so much when you reduce the pressure. Um, it, it will, the pipeline pressure is 492 PSI, and it will be reduced to, to two pressures, 200 pounds uh, PSI as well as 56 PSI. The 56 PSI will be a supplement to the existing uh, Scarborough distribution system, so we can, we can uh, increase the capacity, uh, take on new customers in Scarborough. Um, the 200-pound steel line will extend down the Eastern Road, go up down East Lane to Route 1, uh, and extend uh, along Route 1 to the uh, the old B&M property, which which now is Pan Am, the Pan Am Rail Yard, and that's that's what'll be terminated, and it'll supplement uh, the South Port, uh, Portland distribution system. <clears throat> so essentially, it's it's going to be two stations. The gentleman is correct; it is very similar to the to the facility, we have about three quarters of a mile, uh, uh, be north uh, on um, south. It'll be south. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> south on uh, Eastern Trail. Uh, except this will basically, essentially, be twice the size of that. That that facility isn't large enough to increase capacity. It's it's met its its limit for capacity. So therefore, we want to build this larger facility. <coughs> Um, any questions? Yeah, Carl, you had a question. I don't have a question for him. No, I just I had a comment that that in my mind I I I've really only got two issues. One is that um, if we sell this, that we get the right price for the property um, based on the fair market value of it. Uh, I took a quick look at the full appraisal here tonight. Um, there's no there's no Scarborough properties that I saw are included in that appraisal, so I think that our evaluation of the appraisal is important in us determining what the what the actual value that we would agree to um, is. 
I have no problem with the project. I have no problem selling or leasing, and I think I'd prefer selling based on the conversations we had last fall at our meeting. Um, and I'm concerned about the ultimate aesthetics of the parcel and, you know, how it's going to be perceived by people using the uh, Eastern Trail um, because for those who are upset about it, we're going to be the ones who enabled the project to go forward by selling the property. So I just want to be sure that the planning board is, is going to review this uh, under this site plan rules and that we don't have to engage ourselves in dealing with the buffering, the aesthetics, and whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm okay relying on the planning board to establish the standard to which the aesthetics are treated, the buffering and the uh, landscaping, whatever that might be. I'm happy to let the planning board do that. However, if they're not going to do that, then I think we need to ask Unitil to submit to us a detailed um, design of what they're proposing for the landscaping. And I guess I just don't really understand what that process is going to be. So are you going to have to be receiving approval from the planning board prior to uh, moving forward with the permits? Yes. We, we will require site plan review with the planning board. Okay. So I'm comfortable relying on the planning board to make those determinations. I think that's more in their realm of responsibility. I'm happy for us to do it if need be, but if, if, uh, if Dave advises us that town staff are going to be engaged in that process with the planning board. I'm just as happy not to have us have to make that make that determination. So I think the key would be for us then to really resolve what the actual value of the parcel is that we're going to convey, and we can do that at the meeting when that you're going to set up with our with our attorneys and and uh, if we need to have another appraisal done. Um, I guess we can deal with that and with with Unitil on it. So I, I guess I just want to say I don't really see any impediments uh, to this, but I think we have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that we're getting the fair market value for the parcel from the ratepayers. It's a it's a uh, almost a quarter of an acre, um, so not a lot of money one way or the other. But my instincts were it was going to be worth more than eight thousand dollars. We're there. Sorry, I didn't, we didn't have the full appraisal at our disposal. Were there, uh, were there comps in here as well? Yeah, um, there are comps in here. For Scarborough or other towns? No. Well, they're from other towns. Other towns, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, do you have any additional presentation you want to do tonight? I think we that's pretty much, yeah. I, I just have one additional question. I know there was some... A discrepancy about where the town parking lot currently lies. Has that all been straightened out? Yeah. It is. So to clarify, we are just approving the check receipt yeah. right now to allow us to do the due diligence that we need to to move ahead. That is correct. <coughs> Did you have more of a presentation on the table? No, I think that's we, we got the environmental. Uh, like a recap of the design, what's going to go in there. It's pretty straightforward, simple, piping in and out of the ground. Fencing, there'll be a fence around it just to keep it secure. Um, and then kind of, you know, as far as any kind of aesthetics, just to make it kind of blend in. So um, we actually had a station further up the road towards Black Point some, what, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. They took that out because the usage wasn't there. And we went to go back there and put it right in the back in the same place, and that's where the town asked us if we could consider looking at other locations and even suggested that we approach the sanitary district. I think I mentioned that the last time. So um, just to keep it further down and, and kind of more of a low-key type, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, situation there where it's, you know, it kind of blends in more with what's going on in the neighborhood. So. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So the motion is to accept the check to complete the due diligence on the on the uh, appraisal, I guess, yep. at this point. All in favor? Thank you. So we're moving on to 
Emails. Emails. I reached out to our legal counsel with regard to uh, emails and FOA, uh, Freedom of uh, Access. I forget what the AA stands for. Act. Act. Thank you. Um, in summary, the use of personal emails is okay, providing it is used as a group uh, for the transmittal of agendas and packets. Uh, substance questions uh, uh, be directed to the superintendent and at most one other board member. These recommended recommendations are consistent with how the district utilizes email. Um, I have extracted the following text from our council's email. Uh, the full email is provided in your packet. Um, I'll just read a couple of paragraph uh, things. When group emails, um, this is quote, uh, when group emails among three or more board members are address substance issues, one could certainly argue that such electronic conversation is an illegal meeting of the body that should have been no noticed to the public and occurred in such a way to facilitate public attendance. Therefore, we recommend that group emails to the board be limited to transferring agendas or packets in advance of meetings and or ministerial um, type of <coughs> issues such as logistics for scheduling a meeting. To the extent substance communication by board members occur over email, they should not be copied to two or more of the other members of the board and certainly not to the entire board. We recommend that substance questions issues be directed to the district manager who could raise issues to share with the larger group at the next meeting. Substance deliberations should be considered during a duly noticed meeting. Um, and th the next piece I, I pulled out of the email was, quote, we often <coughs> represent entities with elected board whose members use their own personal email accounts for board businesses. Uh, when this is the case, we recommend that unless the district were to change its email system and provide email accounts to all electric officials and staff, the best approach to dealing with this issue is to be sure that any email a board member writes must be copied to a district employee with a district email address. Um, so th this issue came up uh, recently. Um, the chairman had asked me to look into it, um, and so I did check out with our council. And um, <clears throat> with regards to our personal email accounts, which we don't do not have district email accounts for our board members, uh, that is uh, okay with our council and how we are dealing, distributing our uh, packets and agendas is consistent with their recommendations. So I see no need for any changes at this point unless one of the trustees would like to propose something. The only thing I have to say about it is <coughs> Dave, seems, Dave can send out anything to all of us. But if you want to respond to what Dave sends to you to Dave, it's to Dave only. You can't resp respond to everyone again because then you're carrying on conversations amongst the whole group. So I guess the key word in this whole quote is substantive. Mm -hmm. All right. Dave sends an email to everyone, says Unitil's coming tonight, and I respond, okay, who from Unitil is coming? That doesn't seem substantive to me, and I would probably email all the board members. But if I said, do we want to sell or lease it, that's substantive. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that to all the board members. Is that the distinction, the distinguishing uh, factor here? I, I guess I'm trying to get my uh, uh, my mind wrapped around it. I mean, you send out an email to all the board members, and you have a clarifying question that would be nice to have everyone know what the answer is. Why wouldn't you copy everyone? Well, Dave could clarify that to everyone. You could send it back to Dave specifically, and then Dave could send it out send out a response, oh, one of the, one of the okay. trustees asked this question yeah. in that I, way. I guess what raises to the level of substantive? The, the real point is that you need a record of it. There needs to be a record of it, and if Dave issues, if Dave sends out the, uh, the emails to everyone, then there's a permanent record of that transmittal being made on the district's uh, server. email server. So that can be reproduced. Whereas if if I'm having conversations with Seth uh, and Nick, 
about an issue that we're facing and we're trying to orchestrate a conclusion to that question, there'd be no record of that happening. That's not proper. No record on the server within the district. And no record and no record that would be readily discernible by anybody making a freedom of information okay. request. Right. And it would also be considered a public meeting which there was no notice of. Right. Okay. So even amongst the committee, subcommittee, we really couldn't do that unless there were scheduled meetings scheduled and in a an public agenda place. in a public place. Okay. Makes sense. Good. All right. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Going uh, fine. So so did we get into this with the idea that we might be wanting to write a policy or did we just want to clarify? <coughs> I think it was more clarifying benefit? and that we didn't get into trouble somehow by you know, because we were starting to ask questions back and forth mm -hmm. and then it becomes like you're doing business <coughs> just yeah. sending out information yeah. to the trustees. And just we looked into it. The town actually has their own emails for each individual uh, counselor, and I had talked to uh, Cody about whether we should be doing that or not, and and then Dave got involved in it. And it doesn't seem like we need to do that. Yeah, I mean, even if you have even if you have the records on the server, you still shouldn't be you still shouldn't be deciding issues via email and then coming to a meeting and taking a vote based on what you talked about prior to you know, through an email process. That's not that's not correct public process. Yeah. The real issue is that Ben started the emails and his, he can't manage his inbox. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the problem. So I, let's see how it goes. If something comes up we could we could talk about it again. But just everybody seems to seems to know what the policy is now. We should try to stay with that. Or what the rules are around emailing. So hard to reach that's all we have from that we'll just move on to new business 341 US Route 1 a waiver of automatic foreclosure of sewer lien this it looks that way, hmm? um, this waiver of foreclosure is needed in order to protect the district's best interest with regards to this property the town already has a lien that takes priority over the district and we have an agreement with the town that guarantees payment prior to its release. I recommend authorizing the treasurer to execute this waiver of automatic foreclosure of sewer lien. So moved. So moved. Seconded. Any questions on the lien? No. Oh, Nick? All in favor? No. So none such way of brewing. <coughs> 201 Gorham Road. Okay. Um, on behalf of None Such River Brewing, Northeast Civil Solutions uh, Incorporated is requesting district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer, sewer the sanitary waste flow from the proposed 142-seat restaurant and uh, 4,464 square foot brewery. Uh, the proposed restaurant will utilize an external grease trap. The requested sanitary wastewater flow allocation for the restaurant is actually 3,200 gallons per day. Um, in addition to the, uh, the restaurant brewery, the sewer service for 205 Gorham Road will be laid as shown on their submittal documents. Uh, I recommend approval with the following conditions. Um, Capacity reserve fees. The capacity reserve fee is based on typical wastewater characteristics. However, the characteristic from the brewer is expected to be four and a half times greater than the typical wastewater. With that, a high strength multiplier of four and a half times for the brewery waste was applied to accommodate for the high strength waste characteristics. The current capacity reserve fee is $14.99 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR index. Uh, based on the current ENR index, total capacity reserve fee is $55,013.30. Capacity reserve fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer permit. Any wastewater discharge above the approved discharge limitations are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. The wastewater discharge limitations. Um, uh, is, is, the wastewater discharge is limited in accordance with the following table. Any future flows in excess of the approved limitations are sub subject to additional approvals and fees. 
the flow is limited to 3,200 gallons per day. The pounds of BOD are limited to 6.39 pounds per day. COD at 24.47 pounds per day, and TSS at 5.6 pounds per day. And that's to accommodate the um, the brewery piece. Uh, signatures, all district applications must be signed by the owner, not an agent. That's a clarification. I had that conversation with the engineer already. Um, all sewer piping shall have detectable underground utility marking tape and tracer wire according to district standards. Um, sewer permit is required for each service, uh, one for the house and one for the restaurant. Grease interceptor permit is required. A complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to being executed, no grease trap work shall be completed. Inline food and strain is required downstream from any garbage disposal, food macerator, or similar equipment that will allow food waste to flow to the sewer. Daily pH monitoring is required for the brewery waste. Biweekly composite samples of the combined wastewater is required of which will be tested for BOD, COD, and TSS. Data must be provided to the district monthly. The superintendent has the right to modify the sampling program as needed to ensure representative data is obtained. And professional survey of electronic georeference CAD drawings and stamped PDF of the CAD drawing and a stamped paper copy to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. So I had a question. Motion, motion to approve. Motion, first. Motion, motion to approve with the caveats attached by the superintendent. Second. Okay. <coughs> Glad you're keeping me in line there. <laughs> I did have a question. So it looks like the engineer has signed the application, and that's not going to apply on this one, right? No, never does. So that just. Yeah, I just gave you a copy of what you provided, so that's, it hasn't been executed on our part, okay. nor, nor will it be. And the owner is uh, given the authorization, but even that's kind of written like I don't, I don't really understand it, what kind of authorization he's given them anyway. Yeah. So. All right, good. So we'll get the owner on all the applications. Yep. So I had a question. Um, the limits that you have placed here, you're going to be doing uh, weekly sampling. So it's going to be an average um, reading to get these flow measurements. These, those limits are a, a quarterly limit. Okay. So I'm, I'm just questioning whether or not they'll be actually batch discharging into the source system or whether it's going to be a continuous level if you talk to them about sort of their method of operation of how that's going to work. And that's why I want to be able to modify the sampling as needed to accommodate that. If it is batch sampling, we'll have to get batch samples. Because I'm assuming that when they do the brewing, it will be on a batch basis. So they yeah. may have light discharge a couple of days and heavy discharge on other days. So no concerns about that affecting the system? No. Jason, had a question? Yeah, the, the four and a half times greater than typical wastewater, what was that based on? The BOD of the brewery waste, I, I did some research on it, um, and there's, uh, uh, I found the range, I don't remember what the range was, I used the middle of the range of the range that I found. Okay, thank you. Rob, first we go. I see a very nice calculation in here relative to the gallons that the brewery is going to uh, put out. Mm -hmm. If my understanding right is breweries typically use quite a bit of water and quite a bit goes down the drain. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure that that number, I see that they've used the table from something. Yeah, I, I, I question that table. Um, at my initial meetings with the uh, uh, the owner of the the business, I had a lot had some initial conversations about the number of um, barrels of beer that they would be manufacturing, and my my initial calculations were uh, showed the the amount of brewery waste discharge was actually going to be less than based on that square footage. <coughs> really? Yeah. So, I, 
I, I have a follow-up, but if you want to go first. Oh, well, Charlie, I'm Charlie in line here, too. Well, um, I'll let Ron finish his. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know the Portland Water District has had quite a bit of experience with this. I don't know if we may want to reach out to their staff relative to the amount of discharge. I, I certainly can, but this is, very, this is a very low scale operation, <coughs> brewery, uh, number of barrels of, that they would be producing. It's just in-house use. Um, I you just, know, it, I it could expand, it, but at that point in time, it, it I know they're not a full all out producer, but mm -hmm. you know, I just want to make sure that we have the right number. So. I'd, I'd recommend that we reach out and ask them. And we'll do that. Yeah, you, I, think, I think my question was along Rob's lines. I, I really wanted to know if if we had provided them or if they had asked for an estimate of what their quarterly bill was going to be for wastewater disposal. Um, I know there were some issues in the city of Portland between the city and a brewery in town that uh, the brewery was undercharged dramatically over time for the wastewater, and then there was a water and there was a huge there was a huge inquiry going on and negotiation to resolve what their liability was was going to be. So certainly want to avoid that. But but have we provided them with an estimate of what their quarterly bill would be, or have they asked the question? Yes, I, I met with them. This is one of the reasons why I know the number of barrels of beer that they were producing. I based the bill on uh, that waste. I looked at, uh, I even calculated the high strength surcharge uh, component of it um, and provided them with, uh, well, capacity reserve fee based on the brewery for the uh, restaurant. Um, and an estimate on quarterly billing mm -hmm. for them, including yeah. the high strength waste. And they understand that if the quarterly billing is higher than that, they're going to have to pay it regardless of what your estimate <coughs> yep. might have been, right? So yep. they can't come back and cry foul. It's really incumbent on them to provide us with that data so yep. that we can estimate the bill. It sounds like you've done a lot of analysis for us, but given that information to them, and they still should be relying on their own engineers, as should we, for them to provide us with the with the data you yeah. know, that we rely on. Nick, I'm curious about um, the quarterly bills are going to be based on water meter readings, correct? Correct. Okay, uh, is this a brewery that's just Selling beer on tap locally, or are they going to barrel it up, bottle it up, and sell it to retail or wholesale? At this uh, junction, they are planning on using it just strictly locally at the restaurant. Okay. So I know beer takes a lot of water to produce. Are they going to have a separate meter for what goes into the product? Because we're basing our bill on what they pull from the, the Portland Water District. We're going to get a lot less water than that if they produce a lot of beer. And that's something that they need to think about. We don't have to worry about it. But, you know, they produce th 30 barrels of beer. We're never going to see it. Well, we might see a little bit of it, but just recycle. But not that volume. And to charge them by that volume wouldn't be fair. So they haven't requested any kind of a discount at all based on what is going into the product they're producing. Correct. So that was the problem in the city of Portland yes. is that is that uh, there was no sub-metering going on, connections were, connections were crossed, and uh, water that was being used for brewing was being charged as if it were coming mm -hmm. down the drain. It, well, that's not quite right. But, but there was a yeah. yeah. No. But there were. But the issue was exactly that: that the, the metering and the piping and everything had to be uh, inspected and make, make to make sure that a what they were sub-metering for brewing process and being consumed in the in the bottling of the product, they weren't being billed for, and then properly billing them for the actual waste stream that did that did come down the pipe. 
And but so in this case here, the product is not being hauled off site, sold off site. It's being consumed on site. Again, we will only see a little bit of it, but most of it will be carried out in people's <laughs> person carriage. <laughs> that could be said about <laughs> drink, any drinking fountain. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> not all of it. It'll be carried yeah, it's out. Just, yeah. I mean, As they uh, leave the door. It, this is no, consumed just a production place or is it no, a it's consuming a place? It's a it's, it's a, a restaurant. It's a pub. Well, it's a pub. I would I would tend to think a lot of the product is going to stay there in one form. <laughs> Point a taken. Much, no. much greater. <laughs> and, and the reason I bring this up, Rob, is because in our in the town that I work in, there is a brew pub, and they have increased their production and it all goes into a bottle to be shipped off site. I eventually think that if this guy is successful, that's his next step. So not right now, but later on down the road, it would behoove the owner of this business to meter, sub meter, whatever goes into the product so he doesn't get charged by us mm -hmm. for something that doesn't come down the drain. Yeah. I think at that time he'll be exceeding his estimate and would have to come back and visit us, wouldn't he? It's a possibility. Well, I think we, mm -hmm. what happens is if they take it <clears throat> off site, they drink it at home, then we see it again. <laughs> <laughs> Not if they don't live in Scarborough. <laughs> <laughs> or if they live west of the turnpike. <laughs> so, so that's, a, that's a bigger issue. Typically, right? though, our industrial, our industrial clients do have submeters on the systems. This is, some, this is something that uh, the owners have as an option available to them, even at this stage of the game. Whether they pursue that now or not is totally up to them. pretty much up to them. Okay. So, <clears throat> then we, got the, we have a motion. Correct? Any other questions? All in favor? Next item on the agenda is Eastern Village, Phase 4. Valentine Development, LLC, has requested district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from the seven lots for Phase 4 of the uh, Eastern Village subdivision. Previously, the district approved Phases 1, 2, 2A, 2B, 3, and 3A of the project. As part of this request, um, is for a 392-foot sewer extension as shown on the submittal document. I recommend approval with the following conditions. The project is, is within the original sewer service area. The original lot had an allocation of 52 residential dwelling units, which has been allocated to phase 1, 2, 2A, 2B, and 3. Consequently, all three lot, seven lots are subject to the capacity reserve fee. This fee is based on single-family dwelling, residential dwelling units without accessory units any additional homes, dwelling units, or accessory units in excess of the uh, subject to an additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. The current capacity reserve fee per home is $2,998.88 and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR. Based on the current ENR index, the total capacity reserve fee due for the seven dwelling units is $20,992.19. Capacity reserve fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer permits. Copy of the recorded subdivision plan depicting the amended district approval shall be provided to the district in both paper and electronic format. Um, all sewer services shall have detectable underground utility marking tape and tracy wire um, uh, placed uh, three feet below grade and the tracy wire adjacent to the sewer pipe. A sewer permit is required for each house. A complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to being executed, no site sewer work shall be completed. A sewer extension permit is required, not for each house, but for the project, for the phase. Um, a complete application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no sewer work shall be completed. 
And uh, professional survey of electronic georeference CAD drawings, stamped PDF of the CAD drawing, and stamped paper copies to be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. Caveats attached. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> <coughs> Any questions about the. Oh, Charlie. Uh, one question. Um, so these. These lots comprise the entirety of phase four. Yeah. So we're not breaking phase four down into any kind of sub phases. Anyone else? Not seeing any more questions. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, we're down the budget summary. The four-month budget summary is included in your packet. Note that we transferred 500000 from our checking account to our fixed asset reserves account. I recommend approval. So moved. Second. Um, I had a question. Uh, when do you think we'll start seeing some interest income coming in from our new investment policy? I don't know. I can ask. All kinds of interest rates go up. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're above zero right now, so we should be seeing a trickle come in. Okay. Can, you yep. pick, can you pick six numbers in a Powerball for me? <laughs> 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 the, the other question I had, it would be very helpful, I think, on the operating revenue side if we saw um, the annual budget and the percentage amounts placed on there as well, too, so that we could look at... Um, Percentages. We have it on the expense side, but not on the current month operating revenue side. What do you want? To, we can get together, get the details. Yeah, I just see uh, the um, budget, total yearly estimated budget for, and then percentage, so we can track um, percentage income versus um, what budget was, okay. like we're doing on the front, just to make the front basically consistent with the back. Gotcha. I think. And as long as you remember that we bill quarterly, so. Yeah. Yeah. Nick. No, just uh, first of all, you know, kudos to you, Dave, and the rest of the crew for keeping the budget at 25% when you're 33% of the year done. Uh, I appreciate that. On the items that are more than 33%, such as interest, and insurance, I believe, and material, supply, and equipment. I imagine that's just a timing issue. Most of it's just a timing issue or, or materials, equipment we just had. You just order it early in the year and that's yeah. it. Okay. Just and checking. It, was, it may have been broken up evenly through the 12 months and it just, it, and for one reason or another, it got front loaded. Yeah. I did notice that employee benefits, again, they're at 39 percent versus 33. Is that also possibly as a timing issue? Maybe four or five yeah, weeks in a pay period in a month versus. Um, yeah. All right. We had a five month. Five weeks. Five weeks. Five months. Five weeks. Five weeks. Pay, year, pay period recently. Yeah. yeah, that's what it probably is. Okay, just checking. Any other, any other comments, questions? All in favor? <coughs> Public comments. I'm not seeing much for the public out there. Um, let's see comments. We could start down with Jason. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Nelson. Good to see you. Thank you. And Glad to have you back. Yeah, there sure you are. Glad to have you. And uh, congrats to Seth. New career. Well. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. Nick? No comment. Nothing for me tonight, thanks. Charlie? Have a happy, safe Memorial Day weekend. Oh, great. Rob? Uh, ditto on the happy, safe uh, Memorial Day. Uh, and all, to all our uh, graduating seniors, be safe and uh, enjoy your graduation. And uh, steps forward in life. Okay. I'm wishing everyone a happy, safe uh, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, good to be back. And we'll go from there and thank Carl for <laughs> assistance, and we'll continue on. 
And uh, I guess uh, I want to thank Dave for putting together paperwork like he always does so well. And uh, especially with that arm, the way you have it now. <laughs> it was a little challenging this time around. <laughs> Uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. All in favor? Can we debate it? No. And yeah, if you want, you can get backhanded. Yeah. No, you can't. Okay. <laughs> no debating a motion to adjourn. One hand tied behind your back there. <laughs>